Hey, I'm Nate Savage, and I'm out here today at Wilban Creek to talk about the five biggest reasons that I see people quit playing the guitar. And if you want to play guitar or if you've just started, these five issues are going to be really important for you because I don't want you to get hung up on them and get demotivated and quit the guitar. Um, that's really important for me because I know how much playing the guitar has really affected my life and how much of a positive influence it's been. And I want you to have the same experience. And if you play guitar or if you're about to start, you will run into these five issues. So I'm gonna give you some tips on getting through them that will help you as you experience them. And they're kind of in chronological order. The first three you're gonna experience within the first few days or weeks of playing the guitar. And then numbers four and five, you're gonna see probably pop up multiple times throughout your guitar playing journey. So let's get into these. The first big obstacle that most guitar players come up against is making clean sounding chords. And I get emails from people all the time struggling with this. And it's really important that you get this down right away. That way you're encouraged to, you know, to go to learn new things on the guitar instead of discouraged with, you know, I can't make clean sounding C chords. So I'm gonna give you some tips that'll help you with your technique, you know, getting that basic foundational thing. And the first thing that I ask people when they have trouble making clean chords is, are you elevating your guitar a little bit, either with a strap or footstool. If your guitar is down here and you're, you're using the casual method to hold the guitar, it can be really tough to get the guitar in that kind of position to make clean sounding chords. So elevate a little bit with a strap or a footstool and you have a lot easier time actually implementing the other technique tips that I'll show you here. And the first one is getting right on the very tip of your finger and right behind the fret. That's really important. Reason is you don't want to mute the neighboring strings your finger and one thing that can help you with this getting down on the very tip of your finger is bringing your elbow into your body see how my finger kind of naturally straightens out or comes taller right down on the very tip of the finger that's one thing that a lot of people don't know about that can really help your ability to make clean sounding chords and the other thing that's really applicable to everything on the guitar is to be consistent with your practice you know try to play at least 15 to 30 minutes a day four to six times a week and the more consistent you are with this the easier it will get if you implement these you know clean chord techniques and you can do it it's just a matter of being consistent with it probably the most frustrating area of playing the guitar for newer players is switching between chords smoothly and that's the second big obstacle obstacle that you're going to come up against and there are some things that you can do and implement into your practice to make this a lot easier for you and the first one comes back to the first point that we made, and that's being able to play the individual chord shapes on their own and have them sound good to where you can go right to them. If you can't go to the individual chord shapes you're trying to switch between on their own right away, then you're gonna have a really hard time switching between the chords. So that's number one, get the individual chord shapes down to where you can go right to them before even trying to switch between them. The second tip here is limiting your chord switching between just two chords at first, not three, not four, just two chords. So for example, if you're trying to switch between an open C and an open G major, get the open chord shapes down first so we can go right to them. And then just concentrate on going between just those two chords and really isolating the challenge and focusing on it. And as you do this, like say you're playing a C chord, think about the way the next chord feels, think about the way it looks, and then make the switch. The more ways you can recall a certain chord shape, the better chance you're gonna have of hitting it. So if you're on G, think about the way the C shape looks and feels, then make the switch. Same thing if you're on the C, think about the way the G looks and feels, and then think about it and make the switch. And consistent practice here is also key. Another little tip that um, has helped me out a lot on difficult chord changes is to start on one chord, go to the next, then take my hand off, and then do the opposite. This seems simple, but it's true. Then start on the C and go to the G. It feels a little bit different. The last little tip I have here for you is to get your guitar set up by a professional to where it plays as easily as possible. Make sure the action is not super high. You're going to enjoy playing your guitar a lot more. It's going to be a lot easier to get good sounds and good chord transitions out of your guitar. And this isn't the most kind of glamorous practice in the world, but it is super effective if you do it consistently. 
The next level or kind of rite of passage of playing guitar after you know getting some clean chord transitions down is strumming and a lot of people struggle with this. They just don't seem to be able to you know hear a strumming pattern in their favorite song and then kind of translate it to their guitar. But there are some things you can do to make this easier for you. And I'm gonna give you one particular exercise that will help you start developing your ear and the technique to pick out strumming patterns in your favorite songs. But first, before we get into that, I just wanna go over a few little technique things that'll help you out with your strumming as you develop your ear. First off, stay relaxed. You don't wanna have a tense arm when you're strumming. That's gonna slow you down. It's gonna make you tired halfway through the song. So instead of locking your wrist like this, loosen it up, stay relaxed, and get kind of this rotational movement. I always like to think about if there's something stuck on my finger, I'm just trying to flick it off. Keep a really relaxed grip on the pick so it can kind of glide through the strings. If you have a tight grip on it, it's gonna be really tough to get through the string. So stay relaxed, get this rotational movement in, loose grip on the pick. And if you're having trouble holding on to the pick, you can always use two fingers instead of just one like this, especially on acoustic, since you usually use thicker strings on acoustic. So remember those things as you go through this exercise. Also, when you have upstrokes, you don't have to hit all six strings. You can usually hit just the top three to five and just dig enough of the pick into the strings just enough to make the noise you want. You don't have to dig it in, a lot of it in, otherwise you may get stuck there. So here's the exercise I have for you. It just involves a basic eighth note strumming pattern. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. You just count one and two and three and four and. So just count to four with ands in between. it. All the numbers, one, two, three, four, will be downstrokes and all the ands will be upstrokes. So something like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now this exercise seems a little bit dry, but it builds the basic technique and coordination that you need to start figuring out strumming patterns. All you're gonna do is leave out the one, and then you're gonna leave out the and of one, then you're gonna leave out the two, and then you're gonna leave out the and of two. Let me show you what I mean. If you have one and two and three and four and, leave out the one so the downstroke don't dig into the strings. One and two and three and four and. and just do that over and over again until you start to get the coordination to where you can leave out that one. Once you get that down, leave out the and of one. So hit a downstroke on one, one, then don't dig into the strings for the and. And then two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And this is a really progressive exercise, but you can guess what's coming next. Leave the downstroke on two out. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. and then leave the and of two, the upstroke on the and of two out. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And what you're doing is you're building control over your strumming hand to where you can start to recognize strumming patterns and start to put your own strumming patterns together that fit the songs that you want to play with. And just, you know, continue this. Leave the downstroke on three out, then leave the and of three out, the upstroke, and then leave four out and the and of four out. As you go through exercises like this, go through them very slowly and deliberately at first to build that coordination. And this isn't the only exercise that you can do to build your strumming technique, but it is a very good place to start. So far, all the obstacles we've been talking about have been physical things like, you know, making clean chords, chord transitions, and strumming. But once you have those fundamentals in place, it's gonna be really important for you to have two things down very well or have clear vision on. And that leads us to number four, or the fourth reason why people quit playing guitar. This one stretches into people that have been playing for years, and that's that they don't know what to practice and their practice time to get better at the guitar. And this really comes back to one thing that's kind of the root of this and that's not having clear goals for you what you want to accomplish on a guitar. If you sit down for a practice session and you're like well I don't know what it is I even want to accomplish then you're gonna have a really hard time knowing what to practice. So a good action point for you for this tip is to sit down with and with a pen and paper and just write down two or three very attainable small things that you want to be able to accomplish on a guitar and they can be things like I want to learn my eight fundamental open chords. I want to be able to switch through those chord shapes smoothly. I want to get to where I can pick out strumming patterns, you know, off, off of my favorite songs. I want to be able to play in church or I just want to be able to jam with my friends. The important thing is that you have some purpose behind your practice sessions. 
This brings us to reason number five why people get demotivated or quit playing the guitar. This is arguably the most important one and it's that they don't apply what they're working on to music. I've talked to a lot of people over the years that are like, I've been playing for years but I still can't play through an entire song. And that can be super demotivating. So it's very important that you have a musical goal for all of the things you're working on. Otherwise, why are you working on them? Why are you putting all this time and effort into learning these chords and these strumming patterns if you don't have a musical goal for them? And that's the end goal for us anyways, is to play the music that we love. And it's vital that from the beginning of your guitar experience, you pick out a few songs that you wanna learn and set them as a musical goal. This is gonna do a couple things for you. Number one, it's gonna give you something to shoot for. And number two, it's gonna give you kind of measuring stick to know when you're getting better. And it's gonna give you a reason for, you know, going through all the frustrating and tough times, sore fingers, things like that. And really this comes back around to the last point, number four of setting goals. It's just super important to have something to show for all the hard work you put in and the best thing for that is a song to play, right? So what's the toughest thing for you? Is it making clean chords? Is it transitioning between chords, knowing what to practice, or is it strumming? You can leave any questions that you may have in the comments below, or if you've been playing for a while, leave some tips there that have helped you out and that could help other players out as well. So I'm really excited to share something with you. Starting January 1st, 2019, I have a brand new course for beginners that's coming out. Well, I'm personally gonna show you how to play the music that you love on the guitar. To find out more about it, you can click the link below this video. You can also sign up for updates and details as they become available. I'd love to know what you think about it. I'll see you later.